You're hanging out with your friends. They're all sorts of colors, mm -hmm. like white, Mexican, black. And a part of you sometimes when you're hanging out with them, you feel like you're them. You feel like you're white or you feel yeah, like yeah. you're like Mexican. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, Which is yeah. kind of weird. Like you feel yeah, like yeah, a chameleon. Yeah, yeah. But then when you when someone makes a comment like, oh, you're so Asian. Yeah, yeah, totally. You're like, oh yeah, I'm oh, Asian. I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yes, I know. <laughs> when we were kids, we probably got picked on for yeah, like yeah, having yeah. tiny eyes and whatever. <laughs> but here, just the way how I speak my mind very clearly, mm -hmm. I do something kind of out of the blue, like just because I'm curious, people will be like, wow, you're so American oh, really? the way that you think. Oh, you dared to be curious or something. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Like, <laughs> Oh wait, you're quitting your job like after a year and you're to find doing find something that? you like. Wow, that's so ballsy. Like <laughs> you're so American. So you graduated from Georgetown University, mm -hmm. correct? And you were studying pre-med, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And after you graduated college, what was the initial reason that brought you to Japan? So I was caring for children who had lost their parents to the tsunami, the 311 uh, yes. um, earthquake and tsunami that happened in Japan, and yeah, that was. That was a very special experience. I think through that job, I saw a lot of how the environment and society affects your health. So there's things in Japan like lonely death. And there's also another term that's very, very unique to Japan, which is karoshi, death by overwork. People who just overwork themselves, they um, are probably working, you know, 10, 12, 14 hours a day and I think that does something to your body that makes it unsustainable. So I think when I saw all of that and how the environment and society tap, like plays a role in your health, I started to shift my attention from wanting to be a surgeon to more of the preventative medicine. consistently teaching like every single week and I helped find this yoga community which is now like 2,000 people. Do you feel in Japan there is a safe place or atmosphere to talk about things such as death by um, overworking or lonely death or does it seem as taboo to maybe speak about those things publicly or express opinions? I know that it's becoming a more and more open environment for people to openly express and talk about those mm -hmm. things. But I think what's missing in Japan or what people don't really talk about is people don't even realize that they're overworking. Mm. People don't realize that they're unhappy. Because they're in it, it's, it's become the norm to work from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. every single day, that's normal, right? I see. Um, it's normal to have a job that you don't really like, but keep working. It's an honorable way of living. To hold down any, you know, like desires or whatever, to stick through something um, and just keep working. It's sometimes a suffocating environment. I think. What are some things you like to do in spare time? Well, recently, <laughs> uh, I started teaching. I started teaching yoga. Uh -huh. And to me, yoga is like a craft, which is probably puzzling for you. But for me, when I'm designing a class, oh, it's, totally. I'm designing yes. an experience. And so when I started to really get into designing my class with music, that's when it really kicked off. I started to like really, really listen to music all the time, um, trying to create playlists and that expanded into me liking not just music that could fit my yoga class, but music that could be good for dancing, or music that could be good for when I'm just like at my house like lounging. Yeah. So is something like DJing, is that an expensive hobby? As long as you're okay with putting down a couple of hundred dollars for the controller, as long as you do that like one initial investment, and also buying music. Like I usually buy all my music, so yeah. I guess it can be expensive. So as a young woman in Japan, do you ever feel unsafe? I, I feel safe, but I sometimes feel more respected in the States really? more than in Japan, like especially by men. My first job, I remember our client, he like gave a handshake to everyone except for me. But during the meeting, he's like talking to me and like is 
you know, looking at my, yeah, presence. yeah. And so then at, at the end, he did the same thing. He just like skipped over me. Really? Um, and I brought it up with my boss at the time, who was a guy, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, maybe he felt like that was his respect of like not touching you. Hypersensitivity, mm -hmm. right? Like right. To, to try to help keep your bubble. But I felt like he wasn't seeing me on like the same level. Another thing happened, an inc incident where I was wearing a blouse mm -hmm. uh, to work that like the button only closed okay. up until here. Um, and my female colleague pointed that out in front of everyone. Really? Yeah. Um, and she said, Miu, like, what are you wearing? Can you wear something more appropriate? Um, and then she called me into um, a private room and she said, Miu, like, sexual harassment happens in the workplace in Japan. Um, and that's still a thing here. And so if you show skin, that means you're allowing that kind of behavior to happen. So she said, it's on you to protect yourself. I was livid. <laughs> yeah, because I'm half livid next to you and this experience didn't even happen to me. <laughs> right. like, do you think it's a good time to be a woman in Japan? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, we haven't reached the perfect time, but I think it's a good time. There's a lot more, you know, feminist activist groups that are out. And maybe it's just the environment that I'm in because I'm very conscious and like I love to, to mm -hmm. speak about those things. But I find that a lot of my girlfriends, you know, some of them are creating zines to talk about what it's like to be a woman in Japan and like what kind of things that we can do to almost like fend for ourselves. Like how can we ask for salary raises? Can a woman earn enough to live in Japan properly? Statistically speaking, obviously, anywhere across the world, women's salary are much lower. A problem that we see here is a lot of women are not in high-level positions, mm. and they're not offered to be, and I think that's a problem that we're even seeing in our cabinet, right? right. But that's also because in Japan, traditionally speaking, once women um, get married and have kids, uh, they usually tend to leave the job, so mm. the companies don't really want to entrust them with a higher position. I see. Which I think is the reasoning, but it's normal to now see the husband and wife working together, and so I think the gap is probably a lot less compared to outside of Japan, even though we are, you know, a first world country mm -hmm. and like there's so many amazing things here, like the bullet train, like what? Like such yeah. a great invention. It's such a clean place. The subway system is great. Everything technology is so top notch here, but at the same time, the salary here um, compared worldwide, um, the other first world countries, I think we're a bit lower. Yeah. And if you're a single mother, especially, it's, it's really, really hard to live. Like a lot of single moms still only make 20,000 dollars and they have to feed their child and themselves right. um, and since they're single moms you know they don't have a partner or someone that is supporting them are there any differences in the way men and women's sexuality is perceived in japan or in the world in general in japan actually a lot of the, that sexuality is suppressed sexual education that you know kids get or especially boys get is from the internet from porn and that actually gets directly brought into you know the bedroom um, and i think men's sexual pleasure is more important than women's i think they're starting to be a shift and women are starting to talk about um, you know their sexual pleasures and and that it is okay to talk about it but I think we're still at the very very beginning of like yes it's okay to orgasm it's okay to talk about um, your sexual pleasures to your partner and to have this fluid communication I guess people indulging in pleasureful behavior is not something that's seen as morally or ethically correct in the Japanese culture I heard you started a podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that about? I started a podcast for a holistic wellness community um, named Miko. On the podcast, we invite wellness professionals working in Japan. Have you uh, done any interviews so far? Yeah, I've done four. <laughs> An acupuncturist, a sleep consultant, a gong meditation guide, and also a person that's bringing in feminine peer to products into Japan. Do people talk about money in Japan? I think you hear about money in terms of I want to make more money, but rarely do people talk about the process of how that's done. You said your podcast is about many forms of wellness, but you said financial wellness. 
Uh, could you expand a bit about what that means to you? Financial wellness is, I think, when you feel good about your financial situation. Just sorting out my financial situation, even for a month, like how much am I spending on X, Y, and Z, I think can bring about a lot of ease. What does money mean to you? Money to me is a way to widen my choices, to invest in things that I care about, um, open up doors, um, go to places, like literally travel. So money is choice for me. What does success mean to you? <laughs> to be able to be doing the thing that I love and making money from mm -hmm. it. Besides that, of course, being surrounded by the people that I love and yeah, doing the small daily things like doing yoga every day, meditating, or just walking out and walking my dog under the sun, like that, those simple I like things. That. I like that, because that's definitely, yeah. I, walking my dog under the sun yeah, is, is nice. Is, is in the package for yes. success for me as well. I really <laughs>